Hello guys, it's me again, Karen, from Karen's Intuitive Jewelry. Thank you so much for your continued interest in some of the projects I'm doing. And today, I wanted to try an idea that I had using this lovely, it's called Merlinite. I'd never seen it before, so it's a newer stone to me. It occasionally has a little bit of flash, but of course you can't see it with these uh, reflections of the lights. Um, it re reminds me almost of a larvacite. Um, so anyway, it's just a little round stone, and I thought about doing a spiral, and I kind of drew that out. I want to solder this spiral frame to the back, so I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, effectively done just using a soldering iron to do maybe some molten solder on the back or if I might have to use a torch. So this is kind of an experiment being that I have my new uh, Heiko, Hacko FX601 uh, we'll see if, if that puppy's up to, to the task. If not, we will attempt some soldering using a small butane torch. And then after I was, usually I don't design things out in advance, but because I had this idea and wanted to get an idea of how much wire I might need is why I drew it out. The other design that came to me was maybe doing a little bit smaller of a spiral and then taking some other smaller gauge wire and making like this scalloped effect to where maybe then I can put some small two or four millimeter beads on it around the frame. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. Um, I'll be using, of course, the Hacko Silver Gleam, some tinning wire. I have my little fan that I'll put on once I start working. I use this OD number no. five flux, as you all know, my little brush. Um, the tools of my trade. <laughs> um, copper tape. Not sure which size, but probably the quarter inch will work on this piece. This is, I guess, an older Hobby Lobby brand. I know they make some other soldering stuff, including an iron soldering iron, which I had recently purchased and returned. That's a whole nother thing. But anyway, uh, some tinned copper wire. This I got on wirejewelry.com. This is a 16 gauge, and it'll be good and strong. I might give it a, also a, a light hammering for some added strength. And then, I'm not sure, I could probably use a, a different kind of wire, maybe a non-tarnish, smaller gauge, 24 gauge maybe. Um, so we'll see, this is an experiment, right? And we must start with cleaning our stone with alcohol. So let me get on with that. We'll measure this, cut it, and get it on. And burnishing. Kind of making these steps a little bit shorter on video. 
trying to cut down on the length of time. Now that this is nice and burnished, I'm going to flip it over and work off the spool here. This is pretty springy because it's a pretty thick gauge. And I'm going to get my round nose pliers. Now, typically you have a dedicated plier because of this is what the flux does to, to pliers. So you will frequently work with other pliers when you're dealing with cutting it or shaping it or whatever. As long as there's no flux involved, it's safe to use your better um, pliers. But if it's gonna be exposed to any kind of flux, this is what you can expect to happen to any of the tools you use. So just be mindful of that. Okay. I'm gonna make kind of a tight, not real tight, but I want a decent amount of the wire to be on the stone, right? So something like that. takes a little practice. Maybe I'll use my other, these are six step bail making pliers. They can come in handy. I'm gonna try and keep it round. But I don't want that little kink that was happening. And I'm not sure about the with and between each spiral, so that'll be something I play with as I move along. So I'm gonna do some of this, because again, you just have to play with it, and I don't wanna take up all the time with you guys watching me finagle the wire. I imagine you can figure that out on your own. <laughs> so I'm gonna do this and come back with what I've got. And I'm back, and this is what I got. I think it'll fit on here nicely. This ended up being about 17 inches long, believe it or not. It doesn't look like 17 inches worth of <laughs> wire, but surprisingly it is. And I think I came pretty close to um, my drawing. So I'm happy with that. Now if I can execute the rest of it. So I need to make a bale. And let's see. I'm gonna bend that up that way. I will be hammering this a little bit. And then making the bale. Let's see. I'll use my step bail making pliers, bend this back on itself a little bit. and maybe flatten this end a little bit 
so that maybe I can make these two ends here touch to secure yeah, the bail to the rest of the frame. Let's see if that'll work. sure I'm going to be having to adjust this frame as we move along. Okay, I'm going to go hammer this a little bit. Try and get, get a little bit flatter. That'll help too. And here we go. So I already fluxed this little piece and I'm going to start on the back. I've got my iron set at about um, 380, 390 Celsius. I'm just gonna get a nice little bead around the back. And I'll say so far, I like this Hako, Hako, however it's pronounced. Seems to be working well. So I'm thrilled because I've gone through, this is the seventh iron I've experimented with since starting this uh, journey of soft soldering last March. So that's quite a few irons to experiment with in such a short period of time, I think. And it was mainly because I couldn't really get the answers I was looking for. So I belong to a Facebook group, a soft soldering Facebook group, and through some of the members they directed me to the right uh, gal in a shop on Etsy that was able to give me answers. Cause I'm not the type of person to just kind of go with something without understanding <laughs> the process. So it was helpful to finally get that information. So let's see, that's nicely coated. I'm not going to do anything fancy at this point. Just make sure that there's ample solder because there will be more solder to come. Oops, I might have zoomed in. That need check. I was. Okay. So. I really am gonna get a new washcloth. <laughs> I promise. All right, we're gonna do this. And I hammered this a little bit, not a lot, which strengthened it more, gave it a little bit of a flatness because the idea is to solder this to the back, right? that I need to put some flux on this portion of the wire that will be coming in contact with the solder on the back of the stone. <clears throat> Let me experiment. Will this hold it good enough? I think. Okay, wipe my tip off again. Do it with what they call just tack soldering to kind of get things where I want them initially. If I can.
test this out. See if it's sticking. Yay. Okay. I did notice some of the solder roll off the side, which is fine, because that'll give it a little seal. Okay. Let's continue. Yay. Okay, that worked. Let me let that cool off and see. Let's see, kind of want to tack this on here and connect these before I go and let things cool off. So let's do that. tape here so I don't want to get it on the tape. Okay, that'll join that. Perfect. Alrighty. I'm going to let that cool off, wash it up, see how sturdy everything is, and either reinforce it based on what my findings are, or continue with the decorative part of it, okay? Now that I've got this all washed up, it looks good to me to proceed. This is good and secure on the back. Um, so now it's just going to be uh, all in design. I do want to, as I go around with the wire and the beads, want to connect each of the spirals to give it a little bit more stability. Because as you can see, it's, you know, it's a spiral. So um, anyway, I went and looked and picked out of my vast array of beads. These are four millimeter black onyx, just plain round, always being mindful of the size of the hole in the bead. I chose a 24 gauge non-tarnish silver plated wire from Parawire. I love them. I also chose some, these are silver plated, varying sizes, probably two, three, and four millimeter. And then I have some, ooh, these are so pretty. These are itty bitty, they're probably three millimeter. Lovely faceted Labradorite. They're just delightful. And then also I have some faceted Black Onyx. These are the plain round, and these are the faceted. So we're gonna play with these three and see what we can come up with. So I'm gonna start here, the closest by the stone. And um, let's see, I think I'm gonna pull off about maybe three feet. Should be enough. close to it, a, a span, you know, the arm's length, like you, 
not even that much, but hold your arms out in front of you and make a wide guesstimate, three feet. An arm's length, not an arm's length. Yeah, kind of an arm's length from your, your heart to the end of your fingers. That's about right. And for this, you'll need your favorite pliers, some flush cutters, and maybe even some nylon jaw in case I need to straighten the wire. And we're going to start. And I'm just going to continue with my designing so as not to take up too much time on this video. Um, and I'll come back. And to finish this off, uh, we'll just cut this and tuck this in so it doesn't um, poke anything. Leave just a, a short little tail here. Higher. You do kind of a pinch and a roll. Tuck that in. And I think that turned out really pretty. Uh, the thing that I have noticed, though, that as I was attaching all these, these are good and strong, but because there's no center uh, spiral attachment here, I'm going to attempt, and I say attempt, because doing adjustment soldering after the fact, is not always a great idea so this is definitely something i'll remember in future designs with spirals but i need to somehow make a little bit more solid connection right in here and possibly over in this area to connect the center piece to one of the spirals same here. So I'm going to attempt this. Don't know if it'll be successful, but we'll see. Otherwise, I mean, it's not super unstable. It's just I like it to be a little bit more stable because somebody could totally knock this out of whack. And that's never a good thing, especially if you're selling it. One thing, if I keep it for myself, which I may do if I'm unsuccessful at this, but so with that, I'm thinking of using a four, uh, 24 gauge, sorry, bare copper so that I can solder on it. It's thin, but it'll give me just enough support to the main stone and I'll still be able to possibly feed a bead on it to fill in that gap. So let's see if I can actually pull this off. <laughs> and again, I'm creating on the fly, so you guys are getting to see the the good, the bad, and the ugly. So we'll we'll see how this turns out. I cut off about six inches of this 24 gauge bare copper wire. I forgot to mention that this this brand you can easily get at your hardware store. Here's a 18 gauge bare copper wire. And I don't know, these are like five or six dollars for quite a bit, 25 feet. This obviously is more than that. Um, doesn't really say how much there is, but inexpensive. And what I'm gonna do is make a little spiral here really at the end just to give it enough 
uh, bulk that the solder can connect to. So you see that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash it down. And um, the idea is to solder it right in here, feed a bead on, and then yeah, we'll make it silver, because it's copper right now, um, by tinning it. And hopefully the bead will fit on there, and then I can just wrap it around here, maybe attach it there. And then we'll check and see what the strength is. That might be enough. If not, I'm gonna go on this side as well. So we need a little bit of flux. And have to be mindful, because I'm soldering now around delicate beads on the frame part so there's always the risk that it could it could break one of the beads which would not be good I'd be upset but we're going to give it a try with the hay right so I already cleaned my tip off situated and just gonna do a quick position. Now I need to tin this. So that it's the same color. All right. Okay. Well, I'll be impressed with myself if we pull this off. <laughs> see how easy that is because this is bare copper wire so the tinning process is simple because if it's natural state it's easy enough to do all right I'm gonna clean that up so that I can put the beads on all right so that worked so I'm just gonna go ahead and as similar to what I did with just the non tarnish wire just gonna wrap this onto the frame with maybe two or three twists. You wanna make sure that you're not um, getting any kinks in this. 
Oh yeah, that gave it great stability. Oh, I'm excited. See, this is why I love figuring things out because that's, to me, sometimes more rewarding than just following a proven plan. I think I'll do one more wrap. And the great thing is, is I can actually add a little bead of solder on the back of this uh, added security piece because it's bare copper wire and it'll do two things. It'll give it more stability because it'll also be soldered and it'll make a little bead which will protect it from any of the little pokey bit that you might get from the end of a wire. Nip that off there. Roll that, pinch that down. You can see. And then yes, so add a little dab of solder which will be okay, because I, I can get it far enough away from that black onyx bead, and it'll be you know, near the silver bead, which is metal, so it's not that big a deal. So clean my tip off. Get just the, the smallest, because this is called tack soldering, I think. That's too much. doesn't show from the front, really. Didn't really want it on the bead, but that's what happens. And that's okay. All right, let's see. That helped quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this side here as well and I'll be back and here we go guys it worked perfectly fine on the other side as well it's totally secured uh, my concerns about the frame being a little unstable so wow I'm impressed <laughs> cool when you have ideas and uh, they work so I really love this piece. It's kind of big. It's a nice statement piece. It'll be awesome on a black shirt, which I plan on wearing this today. Um, so now I want your opinions on the chain or the cord. Because it's a big, bigger piece, you can use a little bit bigger chain. This is a probably a, at least a four or five millimeter curve chain, maybe. I don't think it's a fancy Cuban chain or anything. But here's what that would look like. I think it works okay. Here's a little beaded chain that I dug out of my stash this week. I think that looks pretty good as well. The beads maybe even reflect the beaded situation going on on the actual pendant. Or my old standby, which I always love and customers seem to love because it's just so versatile, the black cord. So what's your favorite? I'd love to hear from you what you think about what kind of cord we should use. I kind of lean always seems like to the black cord. Anyway, glad I could make this work because that was more work uh, into a piece than I normally do. Uh, but I really love it. I think I could have actually done without this row of silver beads even. But, you know, and next time I even thought about what would really be cool is to do another spiral frame, but next time I'm gonna do the um, 
stamping with the molten solder. And so it'll be a, a really cool textured frame with the stone in the center. So be on the lookout for that. Okay, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate you watching. And please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm still building it up. I'm over 400 subscribers now, so I'm so excited. It's been just about mm, six weeks or so since I started my channel. And I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks again. Till next time. Bye.